Hello, hello, we are live. How's everybody doing? Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are doing well. Ah, it is Wednesday, my favorite time of the week because we get to live stream here, hang out with you guys for the next hour or so and talk about smart home stuff. So I think we're all good to go. I was kind of rushing to get the setup all done today, but I think we're good to go. How's everything look and sound? Uh, thank you, Frederick, <laughs> already on top of it. Um, looks and sounds great. Brian is joining us from the car. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Brian. I appreciate you and uh, hope you drive safe. Keep those, keep those eyes on the road. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you are new here, uh, if this is maybe your first stream, welcome and welcome back if you have been before. We're just going to hang out for the next hour or so. There's actually a bunch of smart home stuff, new products and things like that that uh, came out. We'll discuss and talk about uh, we kind of do that every week. And then we'll do a little Q&A. You guys can ask me questions. It's a good time to uh, ask questions, uh, like the last half of the stream, especially once we get through any new things to discuss. But in the meantime, let's say hi to some folks and let's see who we got here in the house. Lone Star Trent, what's going on? Lone Star Trent, hope you're having a good week so far. Turin is here. George from Silver Hammer Surveillance, what's going on, George? Green Arrow, how you doing? Vito D, Don L from Texas. Jessica is here from Kansas. All right, how you doing, Jessica? Frederick, howdy, howdy. Let's see, let me make sure my, there we go, that is working. I got some funny stuff going on on the back end here, so bear with me, but I think I can make it work. All right, let's see who else we got here. Darren from UK, all right. Paul says it's been a tough day but made it. My dog is having surgery. Needs something to take my mind off. Oh man, sorry to hear that, Paul. Hopefully the next hour or so we'll be good. We can nerd out about some smart home stuff and take your mind off of that. I know that's rough. Uh, I'm a dog lover and a dog owner for many, many, many years. So I definitely understand that. I've been there before. Alexis is here. Question test. Thank you, Alexis. No, it is not highlighting for me again <laughs> uh, today, but that's okay. We will make it work the best we can once we get to some questions and stuff like that. Frederick says, where is Caroline? Will we see another appearance by her? I'm not sure today. Um, I don't know. She's, it's been a crazy week, been kind of a crazy week for all of us. Um, Fallout Becca doing well, half day at work. So home and ready for the stream. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us and spending your half day off <laughs> with us. Very cool. Let's see, doing great. I hope all is well. Yes, all is well. Thank you, George. It's been uh, it's been a, a long, busy week, but um, you know, trying to it's just been I don't know. It seems seems like it's just always always busy, but that's okay. Trying to trying to earn some downtime, I guess. <laughs> uh, what's up, Randy and Ed? Let's see, Thomas. What's going on, Thomas? Larry Thomas, sorry, Larry, <laughs> Larry Thomas. How you doing, Larry? Uh, to do regards from the Netherlands. Will is here from the Netherlands. All right, Charles, what do you recommend for home kit products? Well, that's a very general question, Charles. <laughs> I do have a video. I think I linked it down in the description of this live stream, and it literally answers this exact question because I get this question pretty often. So check out that video. Um, I go through basically all the major smart home categories one by one and tell you what I think is the best. Uh, that is probably subjective. Some other people may disagree, you may disagree, but those are what I think is best. Again, made a whole video only about two weeks ago, uh, I made that video, so still very, very new and relevant. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into a couple things. Um, oh, you know what, I forgot to make a note. Let me see if I can find this. So is there anything you guys wanna talk about? Anything new that you've seen? Let me know in the comments. I will do my best to kind of keep, uh, keep in the, Keep on top of the chat kind of as we go through all this. Uh, I did remember there was one thing I wanted to talk about and I forgot to make a note of it. So let me find that right now. But yeah, is there anything that came out in particular? I know one thing I'll go ahead and mention the Govi permanent outdoor lights. So those, the Govi permanent outdoor lights pro, excuse me, those are now available. I did a little short video what was that, Monday, I think, when they were officially released. There is a link also for that down in the description, an affiliate link if, you, you know, if you're interested in those. Um, let me see. 
trying to get to all right that's what i was looking for there and but yeah the govi permanent outdoor lights these things are now available not cheap but um if you've been following my channel and you remember the video i made where i installed the original version of these out you know at my house they're amazing i love them really one of the one of the only things that i really wanted that it didn't have was native home kit support well these you guessed it do support matter therefore home kit natively uh so super excited about this uh, again they're not cheap but um, i'm planning on doing some more content specifically around this so kind of stay tuned for like you know more more detailed thoughts on this but um just in a nutshell i think they have kind of earned the pro label with this if they would have just gave it matter i don't know but they actually gave it dedicated white leds so warm and white leds where the original version didn't have that so it is more of a pro you know version uh they did upgrade the original version uh and kind of justify i guess if you can justify that price tag it's not expensive i mean it's not cheap but if you consider what you would pay in a, in a professional installer which before these types of products you know, to get this kind of like permanent outdoor lighting around your house, these are like kind of cheesy photos. Um, but before, if you were to get something like this installed around your house permanently, it would have cost at least probably one to maybe more thousand dollars. So, you know, that considered a few hundred bu bucks, probably not that bad when you consider that. So um, that's, that's my two cents on the price. Uh, thank you, Don, so much for the super chat. So Don says, thanks for all the great content and info. Super I appreciate chat. that, Don. I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, yeah, just having fun nerding out over some smart home stuff. Building a smart home over here. I'm glad you guys are along with, for, along with me on this journey uh, as I build out my smart home. And I know a lot of you guys are too. So a lot of fun. And, uh, and thank you for the support there, Don. So yeah, that is the Gobi Permanent Outdoor Lights Pro. Again, uh, oh, another big factor, sorry, so you guys are probably talking about this in the comments, but they also come in black now. Uh, the black is unavailable. These things sold out quick, so there's white. There is also black, uh, I didn't mention that. So the original ones only came in white. Not good if you have really dark um, soffits or whatever around your house, so the black this is for you if you have that kind of uh, design in your house. Uh, will definitely blend in much better. So nice to have options. John K. Wolf says, question, is your outside lights doing, excuse me, I guess, how are your outdoor lights doing? Are they staying up? Yeah, they're doing really well. Um, I actually was just messing around with the, per the new pro version recently. And I was just thinking like, man, these, this, I don't know what kind of sticky tape they use on those things, but it is insane. The 3M tape, uh, they're, it's so good and it grabs a hold so quickly. It's just really good. But yeah, my original installation, oh, which was done, when did I first put those up? I think it was March because it was like before St. Patty's Day, I want to say, right before St. Patty's Day. So since then, they've been up. We've had like hurricane type weather, you name it. Um, everything but really cold. But obviously we've had really, really hot and humid weather here through the summertime and they are still doing great. Everything is still up there. I actually had a new roof put on, a new roof installed <laughs> since we installed those. And uh, that was like my one request to the roofers was like, hey, just don't mess up my permanent outdoor lights that are kind of stuck all around the roof line there. So new roof and everything, and they're still hanging in there just fine. I haven't had to go up and redo anything or reattach anything. So uh, yeah, that's definitely good news. Uh, let's see, all right. So next up, let's talk real quick. I think I saw a comment or two about this guy. So if you have not, uh, if you have not heard, Ecobee, Ecobee has just released a new smart, video doorbell camera. So I think this is their first video doorbell camera. Uh, hardwired, which is nice. Let's check out some of the specs here. Uh, kind of your typical doorbell cam camera. If we go down, 
What's really pretty cool about this, and I'm looking for a video or an image. Gosh, they don't have any images here of that on their website. Oh, there it is. So what's kind of unique about this one is that uh, if somebody presses the door or rings, if somebody rings the doorbell, you'll get a pop-up on your Ecobee thermostat if you have the smart thermostat premium, which by the way, is the very expensive one, uh, the most expensive one. Now I love Ecobee. I use their thermostats. I use some of their room sensors. Been a big fan of Ecobee and recommended them for a long time. <sighs> I have a hard time with this one because they're trying to buy, they're trying to get you to buy into their subscription service. And I'm just, I'm never a fan of that. <laughs> you know, they're not, this does support HomeKit natively, but it doesn't support HomeKit secure video, which to me ah, is just a real bummer. I wish it wish, uh, I wish it supported HomeKit secure video. Um, at least that's my understanding. So you can see here, does work with Alexa, works with Apple HomeKit. I thought I saw somewhere specifically they said, but it would tell you kind of front and center if it supported HomeKit secure video. So to me, I don't know, that's kind of a bummer. They do have this whole, like if you just want to go all in on Ecobee, they've got sensors that you can, you know, set up a security system and everything. So that's kind of what they're trying to get you to do with this. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, Turin says, not a fan of subscriptions either. Not a fan of the subscription service, Fallout Becca says. Um, Milwaukee Brewer says, I have an Ecobee 3 thermostat and been pleased with that. Yeah, me too. I have actually have one of the Ecobee 3 lights and one of the newer ones, but not the newest one. I love them. Uh, like I said, I recommend Ecobee. I just don't like this this new uh, su this subscription model. you know. And they've been kind of leaning into this. I noticed for a while with their security system and their cameras, like they have other cameras, I believe that support HomeKit, but not HomeKit secure video. I, I'm, I think that's accurate. Uh, I haven't actually used their cameras before. A lot of people love their thermostats. Ed Wedge says, I love the thermostats. Um, I'm not here for, Jessica says, I'm not here for anything that doesn't support HomeKit secure video. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, I, they're, I guess I kind of understand it you know what what they're doing you know you you get people who just really want an easy setup they maybe want to go all in on ecobee and just stay with one brand there's definitely a market for that but they're cutting out a lot of people like probably a lot of us that uh you know i don't care about the brand i just want to work with HomeKit, HomeKit secure video i don't it doesn't matter what brand it is i can get all my recordings and stuff in HomeKit secure video i'm already paying for that you know, that Apple iCloud plan every month to have unlimited video uh, recording there. So I don't want to pay another subscription service personally. It's my two cents. <laughs> uh, so I see a lot of questions coming in. We'll get to some questions here in a minute, guys. Uh, let's go to the next one. And I saw some chatter about this already too in the comments. Level lock. So uh, shout out Frederick. I think Frederick first shared this over in our Discord, um, in our Discord group. And I should mention too, I always I forget to do this. If you want to become a member, uh, you can hit that join button. It's somewhere down below next to the subscribe button, I think. Um, but, and also pinned at the chat, top of the chat. But as a member, you can get to our members Discord server. Uh, so that reminded me. And I think Frederick was the one that first shared this regarding the level lock over there. So the level lock is a pretty cool little device. They've got a couple models. The Bolt, which actually is kind of like the invisible version. So this kind of fits into your existing smart lock and is kind of hidden. Uh, let's see, it's kind of slow to load right now. Come on, let me go back. But. Anyways, uh, this is a Wi-Fi add-on module. So the level lock devices have all been Bluetooth, right? So they don't support thread or Wi-Fi, they're Bluetooth. So that's been, they're really nice, well-made products in my experience, but they support Bluetooth. So they're gonna be slower typically than thread locks and they're gonna be slower usually than like Zigbee or, or Wi-Fi or something like that. And um, 
This is pretty interesting. So they released this kind of, they call it the Level Connect. It provides enhanced integration and automation for expanded remote access and voice assistant technology. Really weird because that they phrase it like that because uh, I guess enhanced maybe uh, is, is accurate because it already supported like the other voice assistants. I think it supported all of them. Definitely supported HomeKit. Uh, but anyways, now you can connect it over Wi-Fi. So it should be faster. But what I really find interesting, uh, let's see, Jay Maloney says, I have a level lock plus and it works perfectly. Awesome. That's the one with home key support, correct? Uh, uh, Matt, what's going on, Matt? Matt Corey is here. Matt says, I've had terrible connectivity issues with my level bolt lately, the original one. I was considering other options, saw the Wi-Fi module the same day, and I had that thought. Yeah, so this is really strange to me uh, that they're, they're kind of, if you look on their website, I don't know if you guys noticed this, they've rebranded their existing ones, Level Lock Plus Connect. So it used to just be called Level Lock Plus, as Jay uh, Maloney was mentioning, the Level Bolt now is called Level Bolt Connect. So it seems like they're selling these devices now with the included Wi-Fi add-on module. So if I scroll down here, uh, right here, includes Level Connect for always on connectivity without the short battery life of other Wi-Fi locks. So, Pretty interesting. I guess enough people were complaining about the Bluetooth connectivity. I don't know. What's even more interesting is at one point they said that there is a thread radio built in to the level, all the level locks. And that was at least a year ago. We have not seen an update to support thread. I wonder if somebody just spoke kind of out of turn there and that's not actually accurate. Um, it, I don't see why they would do this if there was a thread radio built in. So what do you guys think? Uh, Lone Star Trent says the August locks work this way too. Yep. Oh, let's see. I wish the Bolt Connect would have the ability to accept home key. Um, yeah. I know. That would be nice. Yeah, you'll have to get the level lock plus. The, yeah, the level lock plus. The bolt does not support home key. Uh, yep, so anyways, I don't know. if you're in. I do actually have a level bolt myself. It's not on one of my primary doors. I think if it was, it would drive me crazy because it's so slow. Uh, but it's just on one of my kind of secondary doors that I just want to make sure it's locked at night or whatever through automations. Uh, and that's kind of how I use it. Uh, Jordy says, so it's basically just a hub. Yeah, basically, that's kind of what I was thinking. I, I just, I don't want a whole nother device, and, you know, and I, I speak highly of hubs. Um, I've said this many times, I do not dislike hubs, but that said, I don't really want to have to fill up an outlet with this device all the time just for my lock, just for one lock. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of that either, so... Uh, Lone Star Trent says level needs to <laughs> level needs to up their level up their game maybe. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, you can get the keypad for the level bolt. Yes, that is true. That is true. Uh, <laughs> there you go. They need to level up. Oh man, good stuff. Let's see. Another thing too, I did mention. I don't know if. I can go back that far because it get, cuts off sometimes. Yeah, before the stream started, somebody asked me about the Owl Home. Let me see if this other camera is working. Yeah, so, um, whoop, upside down. So I've got some questions, I think, earlier in the, or before the stream started about this uh, and when we can expect a review. That's coming, working on that. So, you know, stay tuned for this if you're interested. This is the Owl Wired Smart Smoke Detector. So been testing this thing out and um, you may have seen me share some of it on Instagram I guess or maybe in the last live stream I'm not sure but yeah to answer that question coming soon stay tuned um, we'll have that review out pretty soon
And lastly, oh, I did have another thing we can share real quick. I got one of these today. Let me show you real quick online what it looks like. Um, and I, I put links to a lot of this stuff down in the description if you guys decide you want to get, uh, get anything. But this right here is a matter nightlight three in one. It's a it's a sensor. Let's see what does it say. So it's matter over Wi-Fi, and it's a color nightlight, a motion sensor. What other sensors are built into this thing? All right, let's get some more information here. There we go, night light. Oh, a light sensor and a motion sensor. So I guess that's the three in one. So I actually have it right here. We can take a look, unbox it. This just came in the mail. I haven't even tested it out yet, but uh, I really like these kinds of uh, devices that you can plug in that have a little light in it. So there's a little matter coat. I think they made this product before. If anybody has any uh, experience with this brand, let me know in the comments. A luck sensor. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, so slide this out of the way. Yep, haven't used these, but I always like these types of devices. I've only got, there's only been a couple over the years that have these little, um, oh wow, that's interesting. I was not expecting that. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. So you have to use like an old iPhone charger or something. Weird. Well, let's see, does it include what I need in here? Maybe it includes what I need. Okay, it does. I was gonna say, that would be really weird. <laughs> Still a little unusual, but I guess you could route this and do something creative with it if you wanted, not to put it on the wall. Maybe that's why they did that, huh? What do y'all think? Huh, I guess that's kind of a neat little idea, you know, if you didn't want it right where your outlet is, you can kind of wire it and put it you know, somewhere else. So, I don't know, pretty neat. Let me know if you guys wanna see more of this, if, if I should make like a review or something about this. But what, oh yeah, what I was gonna say is that these types of devices that you can plug in, so this is actually why I really like the Acara M1S hub. So that's the one that you plug into the wall that has the speaker and it has the LED ring on it. What I really love about that is I use that light as a status light for different automations. So for example, when my, this was huge, when we've just been getting our, um, a new back deck built. And so this has been huge for that whole process. When either one of my backyard gates are open, I have door, uh, yeah, basically I have door sensors on my gates. When either one of those are open, it turns the light on that little hub a certain color, which you could do the same thing with this. That way I know not to let the dog out while the gates are open. Um, and so these are just really cool and that's why I was interested in this. I was like, oh, let me get one of these and check it out and uh, we can do some automations with this little nightlight, hopefully. Um, and it supports matter, so should work with HomeKit or anything else. Let's see what you guys say. By Vito D, have a perfect use case for that. Only $30, but that plastic just sounds cheap. Uh, international plugs, probably. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, Matt. Yeah, very good point. Um, uh, question, is it really safe to have the keypad separate from the smart lock? I mean, what if somebody rips the keypad off the wall? For example, the upcoming new smart lock U200. I don't see why it wouldn't be any safer than just having another, I mean, if somebody rips it off the wall, I mean, I, I suppose that could happen. I don't think it's gonna help them or allow them to gain access or entry into your house. So, I mean, in terms of safety, I don't think it's really, it would really be an issue, but um, yeah, I mean, hopefully nobody would rip it off the wall. I don't think it would be any worse than just having another keypad out there though. Jeff just said, I just ordered four of those. Awesome, Jeff, you have to share with me what you plan to use those for. I'd love to hear it. I don't know what I'm gonna use mine with yet, but or for yet, but uh, I'm definitely thinking of using that, uh, that little light as some sort of status indicator for some automations. I love doing that, so useful. There used to be, you guys remember the old iDevices smart plug? 
don't know if anybody remembers this. This is a while ago. I don't think they make them anymore, but I used that for a long time. It had a little tiny LED bar on it also, and I used to do the same thing for that, and I would just kind of change the colors based on different things uh, just to let us know like the security system was armed or whatever you could do. Pretty cool stuff. So with that said, if you guys have some questions for me, now is the time. Go ahead and drop them in the chat. I'm going to do my best. Only ask your question once. I will try to my best to get to those that I can. Preface your question with the word question. That'll kind of help it stick out. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the YouTube thing is not highlighting for me today questions like sometimes it does. Also, uh, yeah, you could use a, do a super chat or a member chat. So if you're a channel member, you do get these monthly member chats. So those definitely stick out as well. Like Alexis, Alexis, excuse me, just did. Thank you, Alexis, for being a channel member. Uh, for 11 months and uh, Alexis's chat says are the pumpkins home kit compatible thanks for all the content and your discord server well thank you for being a uh, a continuous member a uh, uh, of the channel and supporting the channel that way that I really do appreciate that and to answer your question no the pumpkins are not uh, are not home kit compatible I think was the question uh, that would be cool if they were but they're just kind of you know, little battery operated things. I just thought it would be cool in the background, get a little, you know, a little Halloween spirit going on here. And before you know it, it'll be Christmas and we'll be doing maybe some Christmas stuff here uh, for the live streams. Mr. H4, I'll just abbreviate there. Uh, question, what home devices have Siri support? I know, what home devices have Siri support? I know Sonos speakers and, oh, I see, okay. Have like built-in Siri support. Um, yeah, there really hasn't been any. Um, do you guys know of any others? Let us know in the chat. I don't think there are really any others. Let's see, there's Ecobee was the first one. I don't even think Sonos does, do they? Um, I, I really don't. I'm actually wanting a Sonos speaker, but I have not used any Sonos speakers, so I don't think Sonos does either. Um, but yeah, that's all. I'm trying to think of what else might have Siri built in. I can't think of anything else. Uh, thank you, George. George says Sonos does not. Oh man, Garrett's. Garrett's, you are the man. Here we go. You gotta hit it. Garrett's has gifted five memberships. Thank you so much, Garrett's. That is awesome. You guys, uh, thank Garrett's. So we got YouTube will just randomly pick people to get this gifted membership. So Europlane77, uh, Matt Bellington, Jason, uh, let's see, Kites, Pongan, and Caleb. You guys were all gifted a membership. Thanks to Garrett's. That was very kind of you, Garrett's. Thank you so much. Again, as a channel member, you can get access to our members only Discord server. Uh, just link your YouTube account in Discord to do that. There's also, sometimes we do some member only videos on YouTube. Also, we do a monthly video chat, which will happen next week actually. We do that on the first Wednesday of every month. So I believe that's next Wednesday. Is it next Wednesday? Maybe two weeks. I might be off. Um, but yeah, first Wednesday of every month we do like a video chat with all the members or whoever wants to hang out. Always a lot of fun. Uh, so again, thank you Garrett's and thank you for also supporting the channel for so long. Uh, I really do appreciate that. And uh, yeah, awesome. Now so he's spreading the love. So thank you very much again for that. Let's see. Okay, uh, Tulsa Skin says Sonos does on some. Thank you, uh, Tulsa. I'm yeah, I'm not too up to speed with what Tulsa or <laughs> Tulsa, what um, Sonos offers, but I have been looking at um, some options for like my outdoor area. Like I said, we're doing a little backyard screened-in porch and uh, a new build out there, so. I'm thinking about a Sonos speaker for that. Um, that way I don't have to worry about the weather and things like that. So, cause they have some outdoor ones.
is there is there a home kit smoke detector uh, maybe you're just getting here but there is we just talked about this like literally probably three or four minutes ago this one right here so there's a couple there's not really many good options so I did oops sorry wrong wrong button so this one right here this is pretty new does support Apple home um, I've got some mixed feelings on it I've been using it for a while I will release a video pretty soon about that that is the plan uh, there is also the one, the first alert one link, and they have another model, both made by first alert. Uh, I tried those a couple years ago. I wasn't happy with them. I didn't have um, a good experience with that, so I returned mine. So those really are the only options for smart smoke detectors uh, in the U.S. Now, if you live in Europe, there's some other options. I think that. I want to say Natatmo makes one. I know Eve makes one, and there may be some others um, in other regions. But in the U.S., we really don't have any options, many options for native home kit uh, smoke detectors. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Paul says, welcome new members. Awesome. Yeah, hope to see you guys over there in Discord. Um, I'm usually in there at, at least a couple times a day. Sometimes more than I should be <laughs> when I should be getting work done, it seems like. Uh, question, Mike says, how many members do we have on the channel? That's a good question, Mike. We talked about this in our last, um, in our last video chat, our monthly video chat. And does somebody remember? I, I don't remember off the top of my head the answer to that. I think it was around 250, maybe close to 300, but I don't think we were at 300 yet. I want to say it was somewhere in the 250 to 300 range. Maybe somebody remembers better than I do. I know we talked about that again in our in our little video chat recently. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, healthy perspective. What's going on? I am well. Thank you. Uh, I am. Uh, it's a good good time of week. I love Wednesdays. Always happy to be here and uh, talk about smart home stuff uh, with somebody who will listen. <laughs> I think my wife gets tired of hearing about my smart home. Um, sometimes frustration, sometimes excitement. I think she's just tired of smart home. <laughs> she just wants it to work. But uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Question, uh, want overall solution for indoor cameras? Hate the look of a car G2H Pro. Loved the Logitech Circle, which would be better overall, over, over, <laughs> Would be better overall. I, I can't talk today, guys. Sorry. Also, does all these IoT devices work well with dual band Wi-Fi? Yeah, so in my experience uh, regarding the last half of that question, dual band Wi-Fi has not been an issue for me for the most part. I have heard some people say that that is an issue. They might have to turn off the 5 gigahertz network or... Um, you know, to pair devices, things like that, or some people will separate them. I generally keep my IoT network or SSID, a combined network of, you know, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, and I have not had any issues with that um, in terms of my Wi-Fi network and smart home devices. And let's see, the other part of the question was love one overall solution for indoor cameras and hate the look of the g2h pro well if you want something like the g2h pro let's see there's there's a number of indoor cameras you could look at there's uh eufy makes some indoor cameras that are really inexpensive they don't look too great either though um if you like circle view i mean why don't you just use the circle view cameras inside um I mean, they work outdoors, but you could also use them indoors as well. Uh, the Eve camera, Eve makes an indoor camera. It's a black one, so maybe you like the black style. Uh, Eve makes some, and gosh, there's there's a number of indoor cameras. Um, check over also, I have on my website, let's see. That should be a link to that also down there in the video description. Uh, on my website, I've got like all the cam different devices that support HomeKit under the recommended products category. You can kind of search through different things that support HomeKit over there as well. Uh-oh, Frederick says, there's Caroline. So is Caroline in the chat? Yes, she is. <laughs> What's going on, Caroline? She's probably at the gym or something right now, I bet. Don't be slacking at the gym now. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I think she was going to the gym on her way home today. So, dude, George, you, George is the man. Wow, it's 10 memberships, George. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank George. Wow, oh, we, we got a button for that. Hold up. <laughs> awesome. Dude, you are awesome. Very cool. Uh, Ryan Vishal, Vish I'm so bad at pronouncing names. Forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, Mikey, Nike, uh, Nick Bean B, Rob L. We're all gifted memberships. Uh, let's see. Baba is trolling, Terry Robinson, Dane Walters, Devin, Robert, you guys are all gifted memberships also. Thanks to George, you guys thank George for that. George, you are the man. Also, uh, George, you can see right there, um, Silver Hammer Surveillance is his YouTube channel. Let's give George, let's return the favor and give George a little bit of love. George is always here during the live streams, a big supporter of the channel and also has an awesome YouTube channel as well. Let's see, I'll get there. If I can spell right. And there we go. There's George, George the man, <laughs> uh, who just gifted a bunch of memberships, so Let's drop George's channel in the chat. So you guys be sure to go subscribe over there to George. Also does some good YouTube videos about smart homes, a lot of camera stuff, a uh, big surveillance expert, I guess you could say security expert maybe. So my pleasure is the least I can do for how supportive Shane is to me. Dude, hey, you guys are supporting me. So I thank you. Um, and I appreciate that, and I know everybody does appreciate that. New members, go check out our Discord. If you're new to Discord, you can just go to the website Discord. You can download the app, uh, just sign up, and then in your profile settings in Discord, all you have to do is link your YouTube account, and uh, you'll have access to our members' Discord server. And we got tons of categories for different things, all things smart home, um, over there and we're always kind of chatting. You can ask questions and stuff like that to the group or directly to me And uh, it's just a just a cool place to, to kind of be and hang out while you're building and working on your smart home uh, Like so many of us are Robert says wow, I'm a member <laughs> That's right. Awesome. So I think with that gifted membership you guys get a month uh, membership and then you know it's up to you if you want to renew that or not from there I suppose but yeah so you get a month where you can join our discord server you can come to those member video chats like I said if I if I post a member only video in the next uh, month or so then you'll have access to that which I do I, I want to do some more of those so hopefully hopefully I'll have some time and do some more of those as well let's see Danny said, did someone see that the new iPhone 15 Pro has thread built in? Saw rumors that the next Apple Watch might support thread to connect to the iPhone or that thread on the iPhone could replace a border router. That's interesting. Um, I don't know about the, I don't pay much attention to the rumors. I mean, we just had new products, so I'm, I'm sure people are coming up with all kinds of stuff. But, you know, they did put the uh, a thread radio in the iPhone 15 Pro, so maybe they'll put it in the Apple Watch or the Apple Watch Ultra um, in the future. It's, it's certainly possible. Um, as far as it replacing a border router, I don't think it will replace your border router. If you have thread devices, my opinion is you're still gonna want a thread border router in your home. You're not gonna wanna rely solely on your iPhone if they do kinda unlock that capability. You'll definitely want a thread border router still. Uh, that way those smart devices can connect to that thread border router when you're not home. Um, and just for a better connection, uh, you don't wanna have to rely on Bluetooth or whatever. 
Uh, but that said, if they do kind of unlock that capability in these iPhones, then when you are home, I, I think maybe the idea, maybe they've already done it behind the scenes and we, I, you know, you never really know what Apple's doing behind the scenes, but it's possible that they've already done that or they will do that and your devices can kind of talk directly to your thread devices, like your iPhone can kind of communicate directly with your thread devices uh, for faster response times while you are home. And I could definitely see that happening. That's basically how Bluetooth has worked for HomeKit Bluetooth devices, even though Bluetooth is still just kind of slow and sucks <laughs> in general. Uh, but that's essentially how Bluetooth has worked uh, if you're around, your phone can communicate blue via Bluetooth to those devices, to those HomeKit devices. And if you're not around, then the Bluetooth will, for that device, will connect to your um, your HomeKit hub. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely possible. Let's see what you guys say. <laughs> Mike says, no drug dealer cameras. <laughs> yep. So, that is somebody who has watched George's channel. <laughs> I love it. Let's see, uh, my experience, Apple hasn't done well with Thread yet, hoping they get it right for my watch. Yeah, I know, right? And we got a question about the Akara M2 Hub IR receiver. Can the Akara M2 Hub IR receiver be HomeKit controlled to control my air conditioners and TVs? I'm also in the process of making my HomeKit home. Should I wait for matter or go right into it? Um, you know, that's a tough call there in regards to should you wait for matter or go right into it. I would say if, if you want to be on the safe side, you know, get devices that support matter, um, if you can. So if there's already a device that you're looking at or considering, let's say a smart light bulb, go ahead and get something that supports matter just so you're future proof. Now, if there's a device that doesn't support matter, um, I don't know what's a good example of something that doesn't, maybe doesn't, maybe a smart sprinkler system, for example. I don't know if there's one of those that supports matter yet. Uh, let's use that as an example. Let's say you want a smart sprinkler system, a sprinkler controller. There's not any that supports matter. To be on the safe side, you could still go ahead and probably find one that will support all the major voice assistants like HomeKit, Alexa, Google Assistant. That way, if you do decide you know, to change course or use multiple voice assistants or ecosystems in the future, you'll kind of be covered there um, with all the major ones, even though it doesn't support matter, you should still have support. So uh, as long as the device supports the ecosystems that you're gonna wanna use, you should be fine and really shouldn't have to wait for matter. But I, with that said, if there is a device out there that does support matter for whatever you're looking for, probably wanna go with that uh, just to kind of be on the safe side. And Regarding the M2 question, uh, let's see. So you can pair, I'm trying to think, I don't think you, and I don't use the IR capability of the M2 really or any of the Akara stuff. I don't really use IR devices much. Uh, I don't think you can add it as a device, but you can export scenes from Akara to HomeKit to control your IR devices. So I did this recently in a video. If you look on my channel, let's see, I might can find it for you and drop a link. Uh, let's see, view my channel. It was not too long ago. Uh, there we go. So yeah, I actually did that in this video and I'll drop a link here. So this is to export Akara scenes to HomeKit, and this is really powerful, I think, um, or it can be. So I was pretty excited, like I did things like get my dog feeder in, in HomeKit where I can just kind of control that with automation. Same thing with your IR devices. Uh, there are some IR devices that support HomeKit natively. Um, I think they're only Matter ones, like SwitchBot, and there's one other one, but they only give you like, I think, three devices that you can bring in. So th there's some limitations there, but hopefully that helps. Uh, Paul, thank you so much, Paul. So Paul used his member chat and Paul has been a member for, what does that say, 18 months. Man, thank you so much, Paul, for that continued support. And Paul says, you asked for ideas when you went YouTube completely. I said, how about collaborations? And you asked who I, 
I would like to see. I think your first sub, Eric. Very cool. Uh, so my first, so Eric, um, modern day tech, is that who you're talking about? Is Eric in here? I don't think Eric's in here today. Uh, yeah, I think Eric was my very first member of the channel. So yeah, when I started the channel membership program, what, a couple years ago, Paul says, yes. Okay, Eric, modern, I would love to. Yeah, we can maybe, maybe we can do some more collaborations. I did do some really fun, actually, here, I got my channel up right here. If you guys haven't seen these, check them out. Um, they didn't perform as well as some of my other videos for whatever reason, but check out these. I did do two collaboration videos. If you guys haven't seen these, uh, I mean, we got like just some of the, my favorite YouTubers. I mean, look, we got Eric Wielander, Tech with Brett, uh, Smart Home Solver, uh, let's see, Modern Day Tech is in there, George is in there, Paul Hibbert, all of these guys were in these videos and um, super cool that everybody, you know, collaborated. That was a lot of fun. I'd love to do some more stuff. Maybe we can get some ideas from you guys what kind of collaborations we should do. Uh, but yeah, that was so much fun and really appreciated them all contributing to those videos and um, yeah, just a lot of fun. So I love it. I love the collaboration ideas. Fallout Becca said those collab videos are definitely some of my favorites. Awesome. Well, that's very good to hear. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, um, yeah, love love hearing the feedback. Uh, Edgar's text says questions, thoughts on the new FP2 firmware that tracks sleeping detection. Uh, and I see, I think Jeff from Michigan says, I think it's only available in China at the moment. Also, I believe you need two FP2s to accomplish it. It's an odd setup at the moment. I didn't know about the two FP2s, but it sounds like Jeff knows what he's talking about. So, um, but yeah, I don't think it's available in the US or internationally yet. It should be coming. I remember uh, I heard from Akara at one point, probably a month or two ago, and I think it was supposed to come already, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe it's just taking a little bit longer. I would be pretty surprised if they did have uh, that feature and require two FP2s, like internationally, if they released that feature and you needed two FP2s for sleep tracking. Excuse me, I'd be a bit surprised. So hopefully by the time it's released internationally, that won't be the case. But yeah, I don't really have any thoughts on it because I haven't you know, been able to use it yet. But yeah, I do think it should come internationally pretty soon, that feature. Hopefully pretty soon if it's been released in China. Uh, let's see. Question, have you commented on the Umbrella smart lamps they've made with Nanoleaf? Oh, um, Umbra. I said umbrella. My brain read umbrella. Let's see. I have not commented on this yet, Mark. Let's see. Let's pull it up because a lot of people may not know what you're talking about there. In fact, I only briefly saw this, so you're going to get some raw thoughts here because I haven't really looked into this very much. I must be using up all my bandwidth for the stream. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Umbra Cano Portable Smart Lamp. Is this the one you're talking about, Mark? I think there was a few ver versions. That's a pretty unique looking little device there. $95, honestly not a terrible price for a little lamp like that. Oh, they make the cup lamp. Okay, yeah, this is the one I remember seeing. I don't know that I would ever use this, um, but I don't know. It could be kind of cool for a desk if you have the right desk set up for it. I kind of like this one. They make it look like it's battery powered because they never show any cords. Is this thing battery powered? <laughs> Mark says, yep, weird. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. It looks like a... Um, Reminds me of what's that oh, that old like children's game Jacks. Well, that's what they look like the the base of it. I think that was the name of the game. Um, uh, 
wirelessly with the nano leaf app using Bluetooth. I'm trying to see if this thing, it, it, it does support matter. So that's pretty nice. I want to know wireless, okay. I'm curious if this thing is is uh like wireless if you could just move it around. I don't see anywhere. I'm probably looking over it. Small but mighty. Looks kind of like a the uh plate. What is it? The Hugh Hugh Go, I think is what they call it. Ty says it is, so yeah, maybe this is um, a wireless one. That one's kind of cool. I don't know how interested I'd be in the cup lamp. Again, you'd have to just have a setup that could really, um, you know, where that would fit in really well. That's a very uh, niche, I think, product. product. But this one, again, pretty weird looking. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Look at that. They got it sitting down on, the, on its face. I don't know. That's weird. Now I just want one because it's so weird. <laughs> Let's see what you guys say. Uh, you, I looked over it. Thank you, Ty. I tend to do that during these live streams. Talking and reading, same time. Um, probably not my strong suit. Thank you. USB-C rechargeable. So that, I mean, that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, I might have to check out that. I might have to check that out and uh, get one, just see what it's all about. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm just still kind of tripping out about that. They just sat it right on its face. I uh, I want to get one just so I can do that. Uh, Dan says, keep my 3D printing tools right there in that cup. There you go. Uh, Dan says he likes it. So, all right. Uh, let's see. I think I saw another question or two if I, oh man, uh, Thomas, dude, I'm sorry. I missed your super chat earlier. Hopefully you're still here, Thomas. Um, thank you so much super for the chat. super chat. Sorry, I, I missed that and looking at these crazy lights, these home kit lights over here. So thank you so much again for the super chat. Uh, support for, support, thanks for info last week, Thomas says. So thank you for joining us and hanging out during these live streams. Always happy to help as much as I can. Uh, Jesse says, hey Shane, which HomeKit dimmer and fan controller do you recommend? Thanks in advance. Lutron all day. Again, guys, check out the video. If you're curious at all about my favorite anything, check out that video that I referenced. I referenced it earlier. It should be linked down in the video description, the live stream, dis the live stream description here today. Um, it was just probably about two weeks ago. I covered all my favorite devices for each category in smart home basically and um yeah i did in that one when i talked about smart lights and switches lutron caseta all day for both fan controllers and dimmers um, i love them actually got some more coming i replaced some of the older traditional style ones uh let's see let me pull up amazon I replaced some of my older ones that I had in my kitchen. So I had in my kitchen, I had some of the Lutron Caseta, just the basic on off actually. So it wasn't even the dimmer, just the on off buttons, you know, the kind of the old, the button style. I don't know if you've, if you've seen the Lutron Caseta products, they're awesome. They're super reliable. They're just not the greatest looking, but I replaced some of those with the newer Diva dimmers. And I don't know why uh, this is loading so slow today. I'm trying to show you guys the... Um, anyways, let's see, is the stream still good? All right, stream is still good. I don't know, having trouble loading websites on there today as I'm streaming. But anyways, I replaced some of the, D with the new Diva dimmers and I'm also getting some more of the Claro switches. I want to replace just like 
all the ones in the on the main floor with those those new style ones they look more like traditional paddle switches and actually the wife went in there and she was like oh i like these switches so <laughs> we got wife approval on that one yep uh Lutron, uh if you could choose one ecosystem for your full home kit home what would it be like eve a car oh man that's tough don't make me choose i can't i don't think i can choose just one um, it's hard to beat Akara, to be honest. They have such a variety of products. Uh, you can get almost anything you need with Akara. So if I had to pick only one, it might be Akara just because of the vast uh, selection. I mean, you can even get light switch, even though they're not my favorite light switches. Again, if I had to pick one, you could get light switches, uh, buttons, sensors, all the stuff from Akara. Eve, you mentioned, you mentioned two of my favorites right there, Eve and Akara. I love Eve too. They don't have quite as many devices. I guess they do have a lot of the sensors, but Akara, I just love because they're so affordable. So you can get so many little sensors and stuff for, you know, just for little automations and stuff around your house that maybe, you know, you don't want to spend a ton of money just to make your gate smart or something like that, you know, like I was talking about earlier, especially if the sensor might die in a year because it's it's uh, bad weather. That hasn't happened. They've they've been working well outside forever. Uh, I weatherproofed them, but um, anyways, I'm rambling on about that. But yeah, so I I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to choose. A car is great. I love a car. Quality, price. Eve is great. Loot. I I can't pick just one. I tried. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh man, thank you, Jeff. Jeff says the Akara sleep tracking is a is free to use right now, limited free, and likely be a paid option at a later date. Oh, do not tell me that Akara is trying to go in on the subscription model too. I will not be happy about that. Um, I love Akara stuff. I was just talking about them. I'm always talking about Akara stuff, but I do not like the subscription model. We were talking about it earlier with Ecobee. I just, I'm not a fan. I hope they don't, I hope they don't go in. I hope they don't go that route also, man. I really hope they don't. Let's see, I missed some comments here. Um, Mike says, like you, I'm a big fan of, a big Caseta fan. I have not taken the plunge into Hue, mainly due to the high cost. You think it's worth the money? Hugh is Hugh rock solid as Lutron. I would say yes. I don't actually use a lot of Hugh stuff myself either. I have a few devices by Hugh, but not a lot. Uh, and that's mainly because I primarily use Lutron Caseta for all my main lighting. So if it if it's controlled by a switch, I want to use a smart switch, usually by uh, um, Lutron. Now for accent lights. Um, it's hard. It's hard to say. I mean, there's just so many options for things when it comes to accent lights, like smart bulbs. There's so many that are way more affordable than you. Uh, light strips. Again, there's so many that are very affordable. Um, so I don't know. It, is it rock solid? I would say yes. In my experience, it has been. And you know, Philips Hue has been around forever, and it's one of those that just works. Most people will say that. Uh, so I think it will work really reliable. It's just hard because there are so many other products um, that are more affordable. But, you know, I guess like Lutron, you know, you do get what you pay for. And you could say the same thing, I suppose, about smart light switches. There's a lot of different brands, but Lutron is probably the best. So, uh, you know, that said, you probably can't go wrong with Hue if you're willing to fork up the money. I think for stuff like outdoor lighting um, that supports HomeKit natively, it's a good option because again, very expensive, but there's not a whole lot of options right now. I think Hue probably has to be careful because there's some products like Govi and some of the others who are doing some really good good things. Even Nanoleaf has their Christmas lights now. Um, and Govi has stuff that's starting to support matter. So there's gonna be more and more options to kind of compete with uh, Philips Hue, I think. But yeah, I mean, Philips Hue does work well. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, Alexa said, I ditched all my Hue accessories because they didn't play well with my other devices. Interesting. I've been using a few Philips Hue devices, one of one of which a light strip that I use every single day with automations and stuff, and it's it's been it's been rock solid. So I've never really had to think about it or have any issues. Um, let's see. I'm off to ship a Schlage Encode Plus to a member. Thanks, Shane and everyone. Oh, very cool. I think I saw some of that earlier. So we're selling um, a Schlage Encode Plus, so very cool. Um, question, Shane, in your real world, real world experience, how long have your car door, win door and window sensory, sensor batteries last? Whew, I'm having a hard time talk <laughs> after an hour. Uh, so in real world, I can honestly say I was just telling, I think it was my mom recently because I was telling her about some of these sensors that I'm probably going to set up at her house. The Acara stuff has just, I mean, another reason why I love them, you know, their, their batteries last forever. I swear they last forever. Um, I think I've only actually had to change, you know, maybe one or two of my Acara sensors the batteries in them and i mean i'm not exaggerating a car was one of the first brands that i started purchasing when i was building a smart home because they were so affordable in fact i was buying products i had to get them shipped from like um uh like uh gosh what's some of those those international reseller sites because they weren't even available in the u.s yet i was that's back when home kit products were like super expensive and so i was getting a car stuff before they were even available in the u.s so it's been years and um, I, so to answer your question, I can't say exactly how long they last, but real world experience, I'd say at least two years, maybe even longer, um, probably longer, because I know some of these I've been using probably longer than two years and I've not had to change the battery yet. So um, I don't know, they've been, they've been awesome. Uh, Mike Q says, I've had a car for over a year or two and only changed the batteries in the TVOX sensor this week. There you go. And the TVOX sensor probably um, requires more battery because of the you know usage because of the, that display than like the other sensors, the door window sensors and stuff like that. Those things just last forever. The TVOX does actually use two coin batteries if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, they do have that display, so they probably require a little more battery usage, but yeah, even then, over a year or two, uh, so that's awesome. Do we need an Acara hub to add their water leak sensors to HomeKit? Yes, yes you do. All right, guys, with that said, we are gonna wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining me and hanging out today. It's been a lot of fun, as always. We talked about a lot of new products and answered some questions here. Um, if I didn't get to your question, I am sorry, or your comment, I, I tried, but we'll be back next week where you can join me live again, ask some questions. Also, if you're a member, we had a lot of gifted memberships today, which is which is fantastic. Thanks again to Garrett and George for gifting those memberships. Uh, if you're a new member, come join us over on Discord, ask some questions over there, or just engage in the chat. Tell us what you're doing with your smart home. Uh, it's always fun to hear from everybody else. And um, thank you again for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day, a uh, great rest of your week, and new videos should be coming this Sunday, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys in the next one. God bless.